Hello everyone, Paul Keith Davis here. I want to just take a few minutes today and share a little uh, revelation that we have on the issue of baptism. One of the most common questions we get from people lately has been, uh, do we do baptisms? <laughs> and uh, if so, how? What is our revelation of the way that we are to baptize? And interestingly, several years ago, I had an encounter with the Lord and he began to talk to me about this phrase, apostolic reformation, which for me was a new term. I, it was way before you heard so much being spoken of as we have today concerning apostolic reformation. And that means different things to different people. For me, what it meant was getting back to the Bible, getting back to the way they did things uh, in the first century church. That for me is what it was. A commissioning like it was for the Apostle Paul where the Lord commissions the apostolic ministries himself giving the people eyes to see and ears to hear. He, you know, Ananias commissioned Paul and said, uh, The God of our fathers has called you to know His will, to see the righteous one, to hear utterances from His lips, and then to prophesy or to be a witness and a testifier of what you have seen and heard. And so we have done that. We're on this quest of getting back to the pure revelation uh, of the early apostolic church. Two of the things the Lord spoke to me about when He shared that with me was communion and the other baptism, the importance of both. And I have done a blog on communion. Over 105,000 people have watched it as of right now. And we're continuing to get this you know, flow of emails from people watching the blog we did on communion, the proper way to do communion and it being a divine encounter, uh, an uh, encounter with the Holy Spirit an impartation, a release of something that comes from the realm of the Spirit. Well, the same is true for baptism. I don't believe it's just a ritual any more than just doing communion is, is a ritual as it has become in times past. Baptism is an encounter. Baptism is an opportunity for a fresh infilling of the Spirit. And for us, for Amy and I, so many of the baptisms we've been doing lately, it's all about new beginnings. Washing away the old season and positioning and posturing ourselves to move forward into the new season. Now, we just came back from a conference just a day or so ago, and we did an impromptu baptism. Of course, you know, the Lord ordained it. But a number of the people were, you know, new believers, which is even more exciting. And some that had been believers for some time had never been baptized. That was a little different. Uh, and, but many are being rebaptized again, almost like renewing marriage vows with the Lord, but washing away the old season and beginning to move into the new. Now, with that said, I just want to quickly move through the scriptures and why we baptize the way we do. Everyone is familiar with Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission. The Lord Jesus has been resurrected. He's meeting with the disciples, and this is what he says. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples. I, you know, we could spend a lot of time on this. Go and make disciples, not make church members. <laughs> Go and make instructed ones in the ways of the kingdom, disciples. And we're finding that the people that we are in contact with, for the most part today, want to be discipled. They want to learn about the kingdom. They want to know how to walk with God and so forth. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I love that. So here you have the Great Commission. Go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now let me jump over to Acts chapter 2 now. Just a few days later, Peter sitting right there among the 12, or actually among the 11, or whoever else happened to be there. And Peter sitting there, you know, Peter having gone through this pruning process he went through. When Jesus said to Peter, the, the enemy is asked to sift you like wheat. And we discover he denied the Lord and he suffered. He suffered for three days. I've seen that in a vision. It was horrendous, horrible grief that he, he wanted to die. But when the Lord was resurrected, Peter was resurrected and he stood up on the day of Pentecost 
in a restored state and began to preach one of the greatest messages ever preached. And of course, 3,000 people got saved. They said, what do we do? And this is when we jump over to Acts chapter 2, 38, to chapter 2, verse 38. You got to remember, this is just maybe 10 days or so after the Lord appeared to them and said, go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peter preaches the first apostolic sermon following the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the people say, what do we do? He said, that he, this is what you do. Repent, each of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's just pause right there for a moment. Either Peter blew it. <laughs> Jesus said, go baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus, I mean, Peter stands up 10 days later, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. What's that all about? Either he missed it and he didn't hear what the Lord had to say, which we know is not true, or he was inspired by the Holy Spirit and he had a revelation. And the revelation was the name, Yeshua the Messiah. The Lord Jesus Christ is the name that we use to cast out devils. It's the name we use to heal the sick. It's the name we use to access the Father. And it is the name into which we are baptized. He said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you shall receive the gift of of the Holy Spirit. Jump over to when Philip went down to Samaria as this great revival. Philip was an evangelist, had four daughters that were prophetesses. And he has this great revival and people are accepting the Lord Jesus. And let me just read it right out of the Bible. It says, Now the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. And they sent Peter and John who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let me point this out. Notice the correlation between receiving the Holy Spirit and baptism. They're, they're interchangeable. Be baptized and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. They received the salvation and they went down to receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 16, for he had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. There you have it again. Here they are now, the first major citywide revival that we know of in New Testament history. And they immediately go down to baptize and they baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that interesting? Are, are they fulfilling the Great Commission? Absolutely they are. They had a revelation, a revelation we need. And they began to lay hands on them and they were receiving the Holy Ghost. Ver, uh, chapter 10, you know the story of Cornelius. Peter goes down, you know, after having the trance that he had in, in uh, what is it, Acts 10, 10, I believe it is. And he... Um, leads the household of Cornelius to the Lord. And this is his words. Surely no one can refuse the water for these to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did. And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That they, and they stayed with him a few days. Chapter 19, the Apostle Paul now, who had had a divine revelation. We see that he had a revelation about communion. He was taken into the realm of the Spirit. He received his gospel not by the teaching of men, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1.12. And so by supernatural revelation, he understood baptism and he understood communion. So now he meets a group of disciples that had believed in the Lord through the ministry of the Apostle John. Let me just read it right out of the Bible. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Here you have it again, this connection between a fresh infilling of the Spirit and baptism. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They said, we, we didn't even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. Then he said, well, how were you baptized? Think about that a minute. You didn't receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, we didn't even know there was one. Well, then how were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is in the Lord Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. Here we have it over in Acts 22. You don't hear the direct words, but even the Apostle Paul, having been smitten to the ground by the Lord, Three days blind, Ananias comes to him and gives him the great commissioning that I spoke of earlier. 
The God of our fathers has called you to know his will, to see the righteous one, to hear utterances from his lips, and to be a testifier of what you have seen and heard. But listen to what he says at the end of that commissioning. Now he says, now, why do you delay? (laughs) What are you waiting for? Get up, go be baptized. Why do you delay? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't say the Lord Jesus Christ. It just says calling on his name. Romans 6, 2, Paul speaking again, How shall it be that we who died to sin still live in it, or do not know that all of us have been baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ? So there you have the scriptures. Uh, So what, what am I saying in a nutshell? What I am saying is we are absolutely fulfilling the Great Commission when we baptize people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of you that will be watching this We are about to baptize. That's one reason I'm making this, so that we can send this to people. They have a scriptural reference where they can prepare themselves for a new beginning and a fresh infilling. That's what we're believing for. We're seeing that right now. We have done multiple baptisms over the last several months, over 100 people in Canada, uh, 70 in Chicago recently, and uh, whatever it was, 80 to 100 in Oregon just uh, a couple of months ago. And we're believing for a fresh infilling of the Spirit. That's what we are believing for. And so you can read the Scriptures for yourself and you can get a revelation. So here's my language. Here's how I baptize. When I am communicating with a person or a group of people, I say this. Here is how we baptize. Because of your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and according to the Great Commission to go into all nations making disciples, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they go into the water. And for me, as they're coming out of the water, I say, receive the Holy Spirit. That's my baptism. So you're getting Matthew 28 language, but you're baptizing them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Messiah. Think about this for just a minute, and I'll close with this. I didn't mean for this to be very long. Just think about this, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, God manifested in flesh, the perfect spotless Son of God, Son of God, went to John the Baptist to be baptized. And John says, I need to be baptized by you. He said, no, we have have to fulfill all the law. And when the Lord Jesus himself, the Word of God, went into the Jordan River in baptism, when he came out of the Jordan, the Bible says the heavens opened and the Spirit descended and the Word and the Spirit became one. And a voice came booming out of heaven saying, This is my beloved Son. So when the Lord Jesus was baptized, the heavens opened and the Spirit fell upon Him. And one one of the Gospels says, The Spirit came upon Him and remained. I love that. He didn't come upon Him as He did Elijah to do a certain work of service and lift. He came and did not leave the Lord until the cross when the Lord stretched out his arms as he was nailed to the cross and finally at the end of it all, uh, after all of his sufferings, he said, Father, into thy hands do I commend my spirit. And the spirit went right back to the Father, then the Father sent it right back down again on the day of Pentecost. Well, that's why we baptize the way we do. I hope this has been a help to you. I pray, Lord, that everyone that happens to watch this, that we send it to, will have a revelation. And those of you that are going to be baptized, whether it be for another time, if you've been baptized before but feel compelled to be baptized again, or whether it's your first time, we're going to believe for two main things. There may be multiple things. Two main things is our revelation. Number one, a day of new beginnings. Washing away the old and posturing ourselves for the new. Number one. Number two, a fresh infilling of the Spirit. To be filled fresh and new. Just a deeper richer expression of the anointing of the Holy Spirit to lead us into this season that we're living in. Grant that, Lord, I pray to your people in Jesus' name.